In a controversial new interview, Harvard University geneticist David Reich stated that all non-Africans are essentially evolved Neanderthals. Furthermore, he makes the case that rather than only 2 or 3 percent of our DNA coming from Neanderthals, Europeans are actually up to 20 percent Neanderthal. This is because Neanderthal DNA was removed from our genomes due to natural selection over the last 50,000 years. That actually the proportion of non-Africans' ancestors who are Neanderthals is not 2 percent, which is the proportion of their DNA in our um in our, in our genomes today, if you're a non-African person, it's more like 10 or 20% of your ancestors are Neanderthals. Mm. So, you know, if you want to make a strong argument, you might argue that non-Africans today are Neanderthals. Neanderthals, who disappeared from the archaeological record around 40,000 years ago, have long been regarded as our closest evolutionary relatives. However, since the first discovery of Neanderthal remains in the 1850s, Scientists have debated whether Neanderthals are a separate species or an extinct subset of our own species, Homo sapiens. In 1856, Hermann Schaffhausen, a German anthropologist, examined the bones of Neanderthal man and concluded that they may have belonged to a barbarous and savage race of people who were wiped out by a more virile form of man. In 1863, Irish geologist William King identified the fossil as a new species, Homo neanderthalensis. Also writing that darkness characterized the being to which the fossil belonged, and the thoughts and desires which once dwelt within it never soared beyond those of the brute. Then, one hundred years later, in 1962, a group of anthropologists gathered in Austria to draft and vote on an evolutionary history of human relatives based on the species discovered at the time. The resulting textbook, titled Classification and Human Evolution, classified Neanderthals as a subspecies, Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, based on their overlapping morphology. Twenty years later, in the 1980s, Neanderthals were again reclassified as their own species, based on the out-of-Africa theory of human origins, and this is still the most common designation used today. The term Homo sapiens neanderthalensis was back popular when Neanderthals were thought to be the ancestors of our own species, Homo sapiens sapiens, but most paleoanthropologists no longer support this viewpoint or use the term. Chris Stringer of the British Museum is a leading proponent of the separate species concept, arguing in the 1980s that because Neanderthals were not direct ancestors of Homo sapiens, they could not be the same species. Stringer argued that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens were distinct species because some of their fossils overlapped, particularly in the Middle East. This includes the Homo sapiens from Skul and Kafze caves, as well as the Neanderthals from Amud and Shanidar caves. Whatever the case, genetics has shown that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals interbred and share many genetic traits. This is fascinating because of the many mysteries and unanswered questions surrounding our older brothers and sisters, the Neanderthals. In this video, we'll learn the truth about all of the mysteries surrounding Neanderthals. In fact, much of what we believed we knew about Neanderthals is incorrect. They've long been labeled as knuckle-dragging brutes, but new research is changing that narrative. Indeed, our original view of Neanderthals as hulking, dim-witted cousins is very ignorant. Biologists classify everyone on the planet today as Homo sapiens sapiens, regardless of their appearance or geographic location. Nevertheless, some commentators now argue that the extinct Neanderthals, with their thick brows and large noses, should be included in our species as well. So, what defines our species, and who is eligible to join the group? Complications arise when we consider a specific definition of species. According to the biological species concept, species are reproductively isolated entities, which means they breed only among themselves. Thus, all living Homo sapiens have the ability to breed with one another, but cannot successfully interbreed with gorillas or chimps, our closest living relatives. On this basis, species that interbreed cannot be considered distinct species. Critics who disagree that Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens are distinct species now point to recent genetic research to back up their claims. This suggests that the two interbred when they met in the Middle East approximately 55,000 years ago. 
As a result, everyone alive today, whose ancestors lived outside of Africa at the time, inherited a small but significant amount of Neanderthal DNA. Thus, the issue is not with Neanderthals, modern humans, or any other species that have interbred, but with the biological species concept itself. It is just one of dozens of proposed species concepts, and it is less useful in the genomic age due to numerous examples of interspecies mixing. In most cases, mammals and birds gradually diverge from one another. Full reproductive isolation may take millions of years to develop, which clearly did not occur for Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens. But what about the archaeological evidence that Neanderthals had cultural behaviours, such as burying their dead and painting pictures on cave walls? As intriguing as this is, proponents of the separate species theory argue that it should be excluded from the biological classification of species because behaviours are potentially more fluid, evolve faster, and spread more easily within and between species than traits based on anatomy or DNA. Neanderthals survived for hundreds of thousands of years in extremely harsh conditions. They shared Europe with Homo sapiens for only about 10,000 years, and they no longer exist. Beyond these facts, the fate of Neanderthals has sparked much debate. They interbred with Homo sapiens sapiens on a fairly large scale. Followers of this theory believe that while Neanderthals do not exist as organisms anymore, their genes still exist today. Interbreeding diluted Neanderthal DNA because there were many more Homo sapiens. Accordingly, Neanderthals were a subspecies of Homo sapiens rather than a distinct species, so their scientific name should be Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. Proponents of this theory provide the following evidence. Some Cro-Magnon populations exhibit Neanderthal-like characteristics. Cro-Magnon remains from Vogelherd in Germany and Mulladek in the Czech Republic show a Neanderthal-like projection of the occipital bun at the back of the skull, more so than later Homo sapiens. Because many Neanderthal fossils and artifacts were discovered in caves, the species became associated with the concept of cavemen. But many modern humans also lived in caves, with the most famous example being the original Cro-Magnon man discovered in France. Because the age of the Cro-Magnon is later than that of the last known Neanderthal, these characteristics may indicate significant interbreeding and DNA transmission between modern humans and Neanderthals. What's more, Cro-Magnon remains from Vogelherd in Germany, and Mladek in the Czech Republic show a Neanderthal-like projection of the occipital bun at the back of the skull, more so than later Homo sapiens. Nonetheless, some Neanderthal populations include modern human features. For example, the Vindiger Neanderthals appear more modern than other Neanderthals, indicating that they may have interbred with incoming Homo sapiens. Modern Europeans share characteristics with Neanderthals. Furthermore, some modern Europeans have a mandibular foramen, the nerve canal in the lower jaw, that is similar to that of Neanderthals and some isolated modern European populations have a distinct space at the rear of the mandible. Whatever the case, another study confirms the presence of three distinct subgroups of Neanderthals, with minor differences, and suggests the existence of a fourth group in Western Asia. The study examined genetic variability and modelled various scenarios using the genetic structure of maternally transmitted mitochondrial DNA. According to the study, the size of the Neanderthal population fluctuated over time, and there was some migration among subgroups. Remains of this species have been discovered throughout Europe and the Middle East, but a fossil skull from China known as Maba may represent the most eastern Neanderthal presence. Interestingly, the term Homo neanderthalensis translates to human from the Neander Valley. In fact, the term Homo neanderthalensis refers to the location where the first important specimen was discovered in 1856, the Neander Valley in Germany. The valley was named after a poet whose family changed their surname from Neumann to Neander, which is the Latin version of the surname which in English is the same as Neumann. The modern German word for valley is Tal, but in the 1800s it was spelled Thal. Therefore, some people refer to this species as Neanderthal to reflect the modern German spelling rather than the original spelling Neanderthal. However, because the species name was given before the spelling change, the original spelling is most commonly used. 
So if you want to sound like an academic, say Neanderthal. If you want to sound like a normal person, say Neanderthal. Whatever you like. But why did they go extinct? Several theories have been proposed for modern humans' replacement of Neanderthals. Today, most theories agree that Neanderthals exhibited advanced behaviours and adaptive strategies rather than being sluggish brutes incapable of competing with the vastly superior Homo sapiens. Nonetheless, the incoming Homo sapiens must have been doing something different and slightly superior to give them an advantage under the circumstances. What exactly they did that was a little bit more superior is debatable. A number of new studies are particularly interesting as they focus on the role of climate and the subtle differences that behaviour and biology play in these conditions. Perhaps two or more factors contributed to their extinction. For example, evidence from Neanderthal ankles backs up claims that Neanderthals couldn't run as far as modern humans could. Their heel bones are longer than modern humans, which results in a longer Achilles tendon. Shorter Achilles, as seen in modern humans, store more energy and are therefore more efficient for running. Yet, Neanderthals didn't need to be good long-distance runners because they hunted in forest habitats using ambush tactics. But when conditions changed, this could be a significant disadvantage. Evidence suggests that this occurred 50,000 years ago, when much of northern Europe transformed from forest to tundra due to advancing ice sheets. Neanderthals were forced into isolated forest refuges in southern areas, while modern humans adapted to hunting on the increasingly large tundra. This is different than our view of the Neanderthal of a cold-weather species and Homo sapiens as a tropical species. Neanderthal culture lacked the depth of symbolic and progressive thought demonstrated by modern humans, which may have made competition difficult. Neanderthal culture remained relatively static, whereas modern Homo sapiens were gradually developing a complex culture. By the time Homo sapiens arrived in Europe 45,000 years ago, we had developed a sophisticated cultural system, despite the fact that the archaeological record shows little cultural difference between the two species 100,000 years ago. Furthermore, Neanderthals may have lacked the adaptability of modern humans, who had complex social networks that stretched across large areas. Neanderthal populations that were small and concentrated in specific areas may have been more vulnerable to local extinctions. Neanderthal survival techniques were less developed than those of Homo sapiens. In fact, Neanderthals were probably very dogmatic and neophobic in their thinking. This is because Neanderthals may not have used their brains in the same way that modern humans do, because their brains are shaped differently. Modern human brains have expanded parietal and cerebellar regions. These regions form in the first year of life and are associated with important functions such as the ability to integrate sensory information and form abstract representations of the environment. There were also potentially violent interactions with modern humans. According to French archaeologist Ludovic Slimak, the mating of Neanderthals and modern humans may have resulted from failed alliances. When two populations are close to one another but very distinct, they are going to exchange their women, he stated. And this is extremely important in terms of cultural anthropology because gene exchange is not a romantic affair. When searching for ancient DNA from 40,000 to 45,000 years ago, all of the Homo sapiens had recent Neanderthal DNA, which is why we still have Neanderthal DNA today. Nonetheless, when it comes to extracting DNA from the last Neanderthals, who lived between 40,000 and 50,000 years ago, there isn't a single Neanderthal with recent Homo sapiens DNA. This is interesting, because Neanderthals inherited approximately 10% of their genes from a more ancient interbreeding episode around 120,000 years ago. As stated, when two populations are close together but very different, possibly because they speak different languages and have different traditions, or because they live in neighbouring territories, they will exchange women. That means that women have more mobility, which means that my sister will join your group and we know from DNA that the question of patrilocality or women's mobility was also relevant to Neanderthals. This is a critical issue in understanding the extinction and the precise interaction of the two populations. Why did this interbreeding fail? The genetic differences between the two populations were significant enough that they must have tried and failed. 
and we know from DNA that when these two populations met and had children, the male children were either sterile or could not survive. As a result, the populations made numerous attempts to exchange and form alliances, but none of them were successful, and the Neanderthal population was absorbed into the Homo sapiens population. However, when a Neanderthal woman joins a Homo sapiens tribe, but no Homo sapiens woman joins the Neanderthal tribe, this only occurs when two populations are at war. And in that case, you consider the other group to be transgressors, and thus no longer human. In this case, you will kill the men, but keep the children and the women. Therefore, the answers to the questions surrounding the Neanderthals are clear. Neanderthals are not our cousins. They are our ancestors, and therefore they are the same species as us. And with that tantalizing statement, we'll let you ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share, and check out our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you, and take care.